right, we're just going to get right to it. Um, like the title says, we're going to acknowledge some warriors, uh, some martial arts masters, grandmasters that are no longer with us. So uh, I, uh, I move the camera. I don't know if you know my history from and back. I was, thank you, the like there. I, uh, I came from the Mudaquan, which is a Tangsudo Mudaquan, eventually Subakto Mudaquan, and I found out last night, just reading through my post, that uh, Russell Hankey passed away. Uh, I don't know if he made it to Kudan, Ninth Dan. I know for sure he was a Paldan, eighth degree black belt. And it's not easy to get to that level. It's a time thing. Uh, for those that don't understand like how the black belt ranks work, uh, you physically test the highest degree of black belt is by five, maybe six, you physically test for. Generally, everything after fifth or sixth is more of a, an award of what your contributions back to the martial arts are. So you could see people who are um, at an advanced age and maybe never ranked past fourth or fifth versus people who have are at an advanced age and they've they they're like eighth degree black belt because they continuously dedicated their life to what was their thing and i say that because martial arts attract people uh from all walks of life but the ones that stay so long in it they found their thing they found what they were meant to do and it was very special to him you could see that when he would be a part of that so i I, I, I'm sorry for his, for the loss, and but we we also understand that, you know, we have a new generation coming in as well, and we only hope to do as much as these warriors did. And recently, I also found out from another friend of mine, Grandmaster Thompson, who was on Team Paul Mitchell back in the '90s, uh, fierce competitor and a great inspirational martial artist, also has passed away. And again, someone who has dedicated their life and their uh, passion towards something that they found to be their thing and uh, it's a loss but we also understand that that is life and we have to move past and go on to the next stage in our journey All right, so let's go to the main topic here and it's going to be short I'm not going to take too much of your time it's Thursday and uh, weekends here and I got a lot of stuff to do today and that's the thing with um, with our uh, with January you know you got to keep busy and I'm I'm getting ready for February already and March is coming up so we have a lot to do now with that you know and it's uh, I talk to my students about trolls who love to like it is so easy now because they can um, just see your posts and they can like comment and you can change your privacy settings and all that but uh, someone like me my, my, my profile is very public I have to be public because I have to be accessible to people who are asking me for uh, help in some area, getting started in martial arts, whatever it is. So I have to be very accessible. And that lends it to people who uh, just love to, to get a rise out of you. And, I've, and I get them almost every day or almost every week. And I just chuckle because it doesn't matter to me because if you have the time in your day to seek me out, as I tell students, then your, your life is in more trouble than you realize. Same as uh, the martial arts schools that, you know, they would send um, a fake person to come and check out our classes. And this was like a thing back in, it even happens a little bit today, but this happened more like kind of like in the late 90s, early 2000s, before people would just view on social media what you do or before the internet took shape. And there was a lot of images and videos out there of you doing stuff. So they would actually send people to my studio. That was the early form of trolling. And they would pretend to uh, ask about classes and they just wanted our price sheet so that they could compare, see if they can raise their prices or lower theirs or whatever it was. And, you know, I, I worked in, um, I worked in a security field for a few years. So you learn to read people uh, when you're dealing with safety, you learn to, um, to kind of see things. And I would say like, okay, I'll ask them a few follow-up questions like we're supposed to. Oh, thanks for watching. And I would ask these follow-up questions and, um, of course, they would trip up, and one of them re revealed by accident that, you know, they were from the school down the street. And I would say, like, well, you know, that's fine. Here, give them this, 
it doesn't matter. You got to understand this to understand it. You can't just like take it and disseminate it and try and reverse engineer it. And I did tell them and I said, if he has the time and I take it that you're his students to come here and send spies to see what we're doing, his business is in more trouble than he realizes. And that was enough for them to just like leave me alone. And they, they never really bothered me that particular time. But now we're here in the modern day and, you know, kids get trolls because and and I asked uh, someone asked me last day, I dealt with a troll and they said, what'd you do? I said, ban and delete them. That's the best I can do. And they said, you don't want to say, I don't really want to know. I said, I look at his profile. It's a fake picture with a cartoon character. There's no posts on his profile, which means he made that profile specifically to make fun of whatever I was posting up on the internet and or on Facebook or Instagram or any of that. So if he takes the time to do that, his sad, he has a sad life. And I don't have to deal with sad people. I don't have to deal with people who are petty like that. I can just go on and move on to people who really want to seek me out. And then that's the people I'm going to work with. So it's irrelevant what they troll me for. It's irrelevant what they comment me for. I always send a heart emoji to them because just to kind of like get them like understanding, I'm not going to engage you, not in the way you want me to. And it's done. And I think if we teach our kids that, if we can teach them that, you know, we don't have to engage in that course. I only engage with positivity. If it becomes too negative, then I get out of the engagement because I don't have to deal with that. When you deal with people who troll and engage in negativity, it only brings you down. It only brings you to their level, and then you'll be miserable, and then they'll win that way. It's better just not to do it. And I understand it's tough, especially with kids, because you go home, and when we were bullied as kids in school, we go home, it was over, but now it continues online. But there is a feature on Facebook and Instagram and a lot of these things that people forget about. It's called the block. It's called the delete and ban. It's that simple. And if we teach them that, you know, if you don't delete and ban them, yes, they'll make another profile and do it. Keep doing it. After a while, they're going to stop. I know because I've done this. They're going to stop because they're going to know you're not going to do anything with them. And I'll tell you a final story before we cut it out. I used to have a, a studio in Cutler Ridge, and I was on Marlin Road in the warehouses. And I had a neighbor who was a furniture store. Good guy. But he was trying to help some people out with jobs, and one of them was not like the person you should give a job to, let's say. He was a, a troublemaker, he was a young punk, and he would try and get a rise out of me every day. And after about the first couple times, the, the manager of that store came to me and says, man, you, you pissed that kid off. Because every time he tries to get you to do something or say something... You just don't say nothing. You ignore him, and he gets pissed off. And it says, I know. I know. I know his type, and I just don't care about him. I don't have any feelings towards what he says or who he is. Until it becomes a problem for my students, then I'm going to engage. And if he's dumb enough to do that, there's a thing called the law because I know he has some issues with the law, and he's not dumb enough to cross that line. When I told that to him and then that was told to him, it completely stopped altogether because he knew I wasn't playing. Okay, So that's what we have to do, and that's how we have to play it. Okay, And I see some people coming in. Now, if you're catching now, you can uh, watch the replay about my, um, my contributions or my uh, acknowledging of our lost warriors. That's Master Mans on my, on my call. I know you were uh, directly training with or under Russ Hankey, I, I'm sorry for your loss. I know it's a loss for the Mudaquan. Uh, that was his life. He loved that, that style. He loved that organization and did his best there. My uh, condolences, sir, and to everyone in Region 5. I know Region 5, that's the home region of Russ Hankey. All right. I have trained with Russ Hankey. It's an experience, to say the least. I have talked to Russ Hankey, and that's an experience as well. So um, I sympathize with everybody there. All right, that's it. Thank you for joining me. Uh, no more Warriors, uh, no more uh, Daily Warrior till next week. That's our last episode of the week. So enjoy. I'll see you guys next Monday.